are you, are you stopping and restarting? Restart. Restart. Huh? So what are the various uses of Manitol you've seen? What is Manitol? It's an osmotic. So what do you understand by osmotic diarrhea? You're right. It is osmotic diarrhea. So what do you understand by this? Remove the water from the uh, sail and... Uh, Yeah, so what happens, what happens is in, in mannitol is, when you give mannitol it goes in the intravascular compartment. Luckily, this entire, none of, very few or very less of the mannitol is, metaboli is metabolized. Most of them is excreted through the kidney. That means to say mannitol remains in the circuit. Okay, if it was metabolized, it goes inside, it metabolized and go now. Here, now it doesn't get so much metabolized. It goes inside and it is finally excreted through the kidney. Now once it goes inside, what is mannitol after all? It's a sugar alcohol. It's a sugar. You know, it's a sugar. And the osmolarity of that is very high. So because it has got very high osmolarity, what happens is it takes out water from everywhere else. So what happens over here, since it's largely remaining extracellular, it's now we remember when I we talked about antibiotics, we said if the volume of distribution is very low, it remains extracellular. So the volume of distribution of mannitol is very low, up to 0.2 liters per kilogram. It's very low. Since it's very low, very low what happens? It remains in the blood. It remains in the extracellular compartment, of which 25% remains intravascular and 75% remains interstitial. Clear? So 25% remains intravascular and 75% remains interstitial. Now what happens when it reaches this compartment? It takes out all the water from there. Okay, it takes out all the water from there because it is osmosis. Takes it to the kidney and it is excreted through the kidney. This is the meaning of an osmotic diuretic. Right? So if it so where do you think such a medicine should be used? Where such a drug should be used? Where do you think it should be used? Correct. So it used for cerebral edema. Okay, but importantly, what you must understand is it doesn't cross the blood brain barrier. So then, how does it work? If it doesn't cross the blood brain barrier, how does it work? So that's a query, right? Isn't it? What else it is used for? What else it is used for? Is that the only indication? What, are the, what is the other indication? So it wants, it, you can use it to remove toxic waste products like in rhabdomyolysis. In rhabdomyolysis, your toxic waste products, right? Huh? Those toxic waste products need to get out. So you give mannitol, it will try to flush out. So one of the reasons we use mannitol is here. These are the labeled indications. The labeled indications, the one you have is traumatic brain injury or cerebral edema for that matter. The second would be to wash out toxic metabolites. The third indication would be the third indication would be to convert oliguric renal failure to non oliguric renal failure. Okay, you may want to give a, a shot of mannitol because it's a diuretic after all. Right? These are the labeled indications for mannitol. Okay, however, there are few unlabeled indications. Can you tell me one of the unlabeled indications? Or oh, one more labeled indication. One more labeled indication is when you have intraocular hypertension. For example, you have retinal vein occlusion. Okay, when you have retinal vein occlusion, if you have intraocular hypertension, this patient can have retinal detachment. Patient can become blind. They can become blind. Okay, so in order to prevent that, you want to give mannitol. It works the similar way. Mannitol goes inside, hyperospolar, it takes water out from the vitreous. Okay, the pressures come down of the intra of the intraocular region, the pressures come down, no retinal detachment, patient doesn't. Clear? Clear? Hmm? So four labeled indications. What are the four labeled indications? So if mannitol is kept on your table, and you pick up mannitol, you say this is a sugar alcohol. Huh? It, it consists of sugar. It is an osmotic diuretic. You will say that this mannitol per se uh, works to reduce cerebral edema. You will say it is used to remove toxic metabolites. You will say it is to reduce the intraocular tension that develops after central retinal vein occlusion. And you will say that this is uh, may, may be used for oliguric renal failure uh, to convert it to non oliguric renal failure. Right? Here, huh? these will be the indications. Now, there are some unapproved indications. Which are the unapproved indications? The other unapproved indications that 
we introduced some of them is in cardiopulmonary bypass. Inside the bypass anesthesia OT, when they are actually stopping the heart and taking the patient on a cardiopulmonary machine, they may use Mannenol. Okay, this is like the unofficial. There are many unofficial indications. For example, you drink a glass of Mannenol, it's like sugar, no? It is a less metabolizable sugar, rather, rather refined sugar. You take, take Mannenol, okay? So it can be added as sweeteners in your in your food items, it can be added as sweet, it's it sweet, drink it and see. Uh, it's a little bit sweet. Unfortunately, if you take more than 100 ml, it is hyperosmotic. So it causes diarrhea. So you can't, you can't take man because it is sweet, I'll take man at all. You understand, it is, a, it, is, it, it is less metabolized, so obviously the sugars will not climb up, you will get the sweetening effect, so it is used as artificial sweeteners at times. You understand, these are all non approved indications of man at all. But if you drink man at all, uh, because it is not metabolized, because it remains inside, because it's hypertonic, it will cause diarrhea. Uh, so we don't give mannitol only. It's given IV only. Right? Uh, so what now there are some important trivia that you must understand with mannitol. How does mannitol work? What is the dose? Okay. So mannitol per se does not cross the blood brain barrier. But what is known is that when you give mannitol, what should ideally occur? If the if the if the water is coming down, the white matter edema should come down. If the water is coming down, it's the white matter edema that it should come down. The white matter mass should come down because the water is coming down, right? The water should come when the water is coming down. Clear on this? Am I clear on this? But what is occur? What occurs actually in real life is that before the white matter edema comes down, the ICP comes down. I'm telling you something very important. Okay. What happens in real life and what happens in all the studies is what we've seen is the mannitol reduces the ICP, reduces the ICP before the white matter water comes down. This means to say that the osmotic effect may not be the primary effect that is dropping the ICP. Uh, are you understanding? Huh? Because otherwise what should have happened? You give mannitol the white matter edema comes down, along with that the ICP comes down. But that is not what is occurring. What is occurring is, you give mannitol, ICP is coming down, white matter edema is coming down sometime later. Are you understanding? Huh? Because osmosis will take time, no? But your effect is seen within 10 to 15 minutes. You understanding? Within 10 to 15 minutes you are seeing the ICP coming down. Huh? If you monitor the ICP, you realize that 80% of the ICP comes down in the first 30 to 14 minutes. If you monitor ICP, you will see that 80% of the ICP falling occurs in the first 10 to 14 minutes itself. You understand? And then it slowly, slowly comes down. And, and you know something more funny? After 20 minutes, after 20 minutes, the white matter edema goes up. It goes up. You understand? Uh, but ICP lowering measure keeps on happening. De -re -de -re -de -re -de -re -de -re. That means to say, it may not be the osmotic effect that is causing this problem, this thing with Panadol. You understand? So what is the effect? So what do you think is the effect? If that's not the way it works, how does it work? What is the best way to improve your... Uh, imp why is the ICP going up? If ICP is equal to? What is CVP equal to? MAP minus ICP. Right? Huh? So MAP is also going up, ICP is also going up. Now, what is the principle of cerebral reactivity? If the patient's ICP has to go down, the cerebral vascular resistance has to reduce. When will the cerebral vascular resistance reduce? When the cerebral perfusion increases. The brain will not be under stress. The brain will, you are understanding this? Cerebral vascular resistance will reduce when the brain is not under stress. That means, when will the brain not be under stress? When the cerebral perfusion increases. The problem in edema is, because there is edema, cerebral perfusion is coming down, so the cerebral vascular reactivity is increasing. The patient's resistance is increasing, so blood You are understanding? So what this mannitol really does is because mannitol is, is two molecules of glucose going inside and it is a certain kind of a, of a molecule, it alters the rheological properties of the blood 
and once it alters the biological properties of the blood, the cerebral perfusion improves, and that is why the ICP comes down. So the proposed mechanism is the biological properties of blood are altered, and since the biological properties of blood is altered, the blood flows better. The viscosity of the blood reduces, right? Uh, and the cerebral perfusion improves. You understand? Uh, and that is the reason that the ICP comes down. Clear? The ICP comes down. Because you must think this way. If mannitol is causing osmotic diuresis and improving the brain's edema, albumin also should do the same thing. If that was the case, albumin is also hypertonic. Sodium bicarbonate is hypertonic. So sodium bicarbonate should have done the same thing. Albumin should have done the same thing. Right? That is why all hypotonic solutions are not the same. 3% is hypotonic. That also does this in a, in a different manner. It is in a different way. But mannitol works probably because of the radiological properties of, uh, that it exerts. You understand? Huh? Clear on this till now? Huh? There is another proposed mechanism that it also has a free oxy oxygen radical scavenging effect. That is also one proposed mechanism that there is a free oxygen radical scavenging effect. And the fourth thing is because it's glucose, it's going to the brain, it's probably causing a little bit of uh, glucose going into the cells that are not probably okay. Okay, it's probably giving some amount of energy to the cell. So there are proposed mechanisms of mannitol. Clear? Now if you want to give mannitol, what will be the dose? And when will you give mannitol? So earlier, when will you give? So I have a patient coming to our patient yesterday. Mannitol. Three times a day, four times a day, two times once, never. Three times a day. Three times a day. Anybody else? Dose? Hundred. Hundred. Okay. Anyone? Loading one m one m g per kg. Sorry, one one gram per kg per what? Point five gram per kg. Three times a day. Anyone? So it has never been proven that routine mannitol should be given. Remember this now. Okay? Never been proven that routine mannitol should be given. Never. Okay? Huh? Question is they meant to give mannitol. When there is a documented ICP elevation of more than 20 mm of mercury, that is the only place where you will want to give mannitol. Clear? So you have a patient who has a blown pupil going in for surgery. Okay, that is the place you want to give panic. Right? Understand what I'm saying? Huh? Huh? You will not want to give it uh, for uh, as a three three times a day dose because it's not going to work. Huh? What has been proven is that routine mannitol never works anytime it is not supposed to be used. There have many trials that have done routine mannitol versus PR and mannitol. Okay, so what has, what has worked? When there is a raised ICP, you give mannitol, it works. When you are giving it, it doesn't do anything. It only causes electrolyte abnormality. So am I right? What I'm saying? So that is why I don't routinely add. In fact, whenever I add, I try to get it out also. Whenever we add, I try to get it out. It's the other way around, isn't it? Now, when, when mannitol is added. But ticket sale patient we give stat doses only, no? Only stat doses. Yeah, improved. Oh, only stat doses. Every time now we had the other patient who was kind of brain dead, there was we give only stat doses, no? You see he had a blown pupil. Who was there that morning with me? And the blown pupil was there and one side was dilated, one was small. And then uh, you came and told me it is dilated and one is small. And then I gave, it was Nihari Gaiti, right? Nihari Gaiti, not come Okay. Then we gave, uh, remember to tell uh, uh, Nihari Gaiti. So Manitol, uh, when you give Manitol, um, what did that patient had a blown pupil? One side big, one side small. Okay, what did I do? Two things. I caused the ETSO to come down to 32 and I gave a stat dose of mannitol. After 35 minutes, I came back to where what is happening. Pupils have become equal. Uh, ETSO was 32 and uh, you know we are back to our pupil reacting tonight. Understand? So PRM, it works when it is given PRM. In fact, mannitol, if you give, uh, so when do you give it? So patient and I have a traumatic injury there, I give it right there on that, will it work best? No, it won't. Because at that time, what is happening is the blood brain barrier is extremely disrupted. So this mannitol will cause raised ICP. 
it will actually increase the ICP because it will get into the brain. You are understanding? Because imagine a hyper viscous fluid getting into the brain. In the brain, there are only three things blood, brain matter, and CSF. And now you put a hyper viscous fluid inside because it has gone in. It is hyper viscous. So all that it does is, yaha kami pani, waha kami pani, so brain ke dhari kusha dhega. Are you understanding? So in fact, it is dangerous to give marital right at that moment. Uh, but later on, maybe after four to five, that is why they did all this pre-hospital mannitol versus intra-hospital mannitol. So when they found out that out of the field you give mannitol doesn't work, now it is not given pre-hospital. You understand? Huh? So intra-hospital we try to give mannitol. Uh, it can be alarmingly dangerous when you have renal failure. Because from where does it get excreted? Kidneys. If it doesn't get excreted from the kidneys and you give mannitol, okay, where will this go? It will probably go everywhere else. And if the brain is not okay, it might get into the brain. And because it is not getting out, it may cause astrocyte swelling. It may cause astrocyte swelling, and that will cause more amount of problems. Edema. Because it is not getting metabolized, no, it is not it is not metabolizable. You understand? You, you got the point. Not dialyzable, not metabolizable. So all the paradox will remain there, get into the brain, cause astrocyte swelling. In fact, it will cause raise ICP. That is why I was surprised when uh, the neurologist actually wrote Manitol and none of you told to stop it. Isn't it? The neurologist wrote Manitol. Who was on duty that day? You were there? You had seen it? I had seen uh, when he was uh, declared brain dead. Not that. I'm talking of uh, the patient on Conscious. isolation. Yeah. Conscious. You were there, no? Conscious. Conscious. Uh, 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 uh. Then why did you uh, say no to that? I have to come and say no to that. You all should know this, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, you all should know this that if the patient has got if the patient has got renal failure, there is no way that that mannitol will come out. And that stage, you giving mannitol will worsen him. If at all you want to do, I would want to give mannitol to If at all, are you understanding? Uh, so there, yeah, that is why I came and cut off that the first thing. I saw what is this? I cut it off. Why? Have you understood why? Because it will cause astrocyte swelling, this patient will worsen, he will worsen. First of all, is it indicated? No. And if you are giving it, you are giving it at a place which is causing it to be contraindicated. In fact, one of the contraindications for mannitol is renal failure. Are you understanding? It is a record, it is a contraindication written on paper. Are you understanding? Huh? The similar contraindication occurs in this part of the reading. Because you're giving a hypotonic saline inside the lung. Hypotonic. So it will first get inside. Reverse. It is not the osmotic if you're looking at it all the time. It's something else only. But it will cause a side effect. Are you understanding? Uh, so these are the uh, some of the contraindications that you probably don't get married on for. Okay. Now, what will be the dose then, if that is the case? What will be the dose? The dose is somewhere at around 1 to 2 gram per kilogram. 1 to 2 gram per kilogram. Given over 15 minutes. 1 to 2 gram per kilogram. So what is the dose? How much is it? So if I take 1 gram per kilogram, how much ml? In mannitol how much is there? 20 grams. 20. Mannitol is 20 percent mannitol. You have 20 grams in 100 ml. So when I say 1 gram per kilogram and it's 50 kilos, it is 50 grams. That means 2 and a half uh, bottles of mannitol, 250 ml of bottle of mannitol is what is required to give minimum dose. And what is the maximum dose? 2 gram per kilogram. 4 bottles, not 4 bottles, how much? 4 gram per, 2 gram per kilogram multiplied by 5 is 100. 100. 5 bottles of mannitol. That is the dose of mannitol. So abroad you get mannitol in pouches, in like IV fluids. So what is it? You get it as IV fluids because you have to give, you know, they are big people. You know, everyone is big there, 2 gram per kilogram, they are any, any time give 500 ml of mannitol. Uh, are you understanding? Hmm? That is why, what happens when you are going to give raised ICP, raised ICP, that if you are going to give so much of fluid, there is a chance of heart failure. You understand, if you have so much of hyperosmotic fluid, there is a chance of heart failure. Are you understanding? So giving 500 ml of mannitol uh, is problematic. It could cause heart failure, isn't it? Huh? It is so much of fluid and it's going to take time before it goes inside. We want it to go in quickly so that it can start off its effect quickly. Isn't it? Our patient is in emergency. 
उसको इतना टाइम कैसे दे सकते हैं नॉट ओनली दैट व्हेन यू आर बैटलफील्ड मेडिसिन फॉर एग्जांपल वेयर आर द मैक्सिमम ट्रॉमास इन अ कैजुअलिटी सिनेरियो इट इज गोइंग टू बी इन द बैटलफील्ड ऑन द बैटलफील्ड इफ यू हैव टू ट्रीट पेशेंट्स ऑन द बैटलफील्ड यू हैव टू कैरी मैनेटोर कन्वर्ट 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 एफएल इजंट इट इफ यू गो टू द बैटलफील्ड बैटलफील्ड से उधर ट्रांसफर करने से पहले यू हैव टू फर्स्ट स्टेबलाइज विद द बैटलफील्ड तुम लोगों को तुम न्यूरो सर्जरी वहां पर सो ऑल दिस डेटा कम्स फ्रॉम बैटलफील्ड मेडिसिन because you have to carry so much of uh, planet from here to there it is it is too much so so uh, what did we uh, end up uh, doing we started using three percent scenario where head to head where head to head three percent if we more our doses will be much smaller of here i have to fix the line so if you want to give uh, say 15 percent saline 15 percent saline it will be 0.4 ml a kilogram you understand Uh, so the epimolar doses is 0.4 ml a kilogram, which is barely anything, isn't it? It's some you can give it in a syringe. If it is 15 percent, I would have mixed it. You understand? There are various percentages: 3 percent, there's 7.5 percent, there's 15 percent. So half, half, half. You can calculate. So 0.412. So if I would mix it, the dose also in 3 percent that we use, the dose will be 0.5 per double one, per double one point five. So 1.5 ml per kilogram. You understand? 15 परसेंट का 0.4 एमएल किलोग्राम, 0.4 एमएल किलोग्राम, तो 3 परसेंट का कितना? You understand? तो 3 फाइव जब 15, तो 5 टाइम्स 0.4, 5 परसेंट 22 एमएल किलोग्राम। समझ रहे हैं? हाँ, so that is why 2 एमएल किलोग्राम is a dose of hypertonic cell. So if you want to give hypertonic cell also dose will be 2 एमएल पर किलोग्राम। Clear? It is similar to manitol. Manitol 20 ग्राम, 100 एमएल का कोड़ी तो 2 एमएल पर किलोग्राम is a dose. Uh, approximate dose. Okay, clear on this? Huh? So here also it is 2 ml a kilogram approximate dose, right? Huh? Uh, the important thing over here with manitol, with manitol, all the laboratory solutions, we are trying to get the sodium down. We are trying to get the sodium down. We want to keep the sodium somewhere between 145 and 155. This is what we want to keep. We want to keep the sodium between 145 and 155. You don't want to drink that hypernitrite. Right? You want to keep it at 145 to 155. This means to say, if I go above 155, nothing is going to work. The corollary to that is, if I go above 155, nothing is going to work. That means there the serum osmolality can climb above 320. So if the serum osmolality climbs above 320, the chances of hypertonic saline causing damage are higher. And the chances of manitol causing damage are higher. So one of the reasons where you will be cautious in the use of manitol is the calculated osmolality of more than 330, 320 and 330. Clear? Uh, so if the calculated osmolality, so if you want to decide if someone comes and starts manitol 100 ml five times a day, say 100 ml three times a day, two days it's going to be 100 ml two days. Huh, electrolyte osmolality is going to be just let him be happy. Let him do. Huh, electrolyte osmolality is not going to be anything. Patient is not going to benefit. Patient is not going to harm the patient. 100 ml is going to lose some money. Huh, because you are doing more electrolyte. But his osmolality three thirty over three twenty over is going. Now you are going to harm this patient. You understand? I'm going to ask this patient. So, more than 320 milli osmoles per liter, you should not be using manitol. It's not going to work. Probably may cause harm. Similarly, if you cannot manage electrolyte abnormalities, get up that manitol. Okay? Huh? It's not going to. It's first of all not working and just causing side effects. Clear? Clear? Clear on on how to use manitol, where to use manitol. So, in a traumatic brain injury, now are you going to use 100 ml three times a day? That's the answer. Uh, you will never use it like that. It is not supposed to be used like that. If you, if you observe Doctor, uh, uh, what is Doctor, uh, what is Doctor Niyarika? Sorry. Sorry. See how he does it. He does he start manual or no? If it is there, he cuts it off rather. Mm-hmm. You see that? Uh, I am so happy to have Doctor Niyarika here because he understands clinical medicine. You know, as a faltu me galle, I am not as a lagata laga nee ho. He understands clinical medicine to the core. So when he comes. पेशेंट कैसा है आप ठीक है क्लिनिकली ठीक लग रहा है ना चलो मैरिटल बंद करो फर्स्ट थिंग मैरिटल बंद करो यू विल बी फर्स्ट एट दैट हां और गिव इट ओनली इफ देयर इज अ प्रॉब्लम हां सीरियसली यस ओनली इफ इट इज रिक्वायर्ड एट दैट टाइम द पेशेंट हैज सडनली गॉट वर्स एंड सडनली हैज गॉट बैड यू गिव हिम टू हिम मैं बड़ी वेरी हैप्पी मैं डॉक्टर मैं शुड वेरी हैप्पी बिकॉज़ आई गिव इट द राइट थिंग यू अंडरस्टैंड जस्ट बिफोर द सीटी स्कैन वी सीन दिस वेरी ऑफ Patient is there. Patient is suddenly gone worse. I give two fifty for the manitol. Send the patient for the CT scan. He's happy. Yeah. Other you put another man TDS. He comes and says, "What is this? What the hell is this? Don't understand. What is this? Clear? Huh? 
Ragnarok was actually great and you know that first was a man to the police and you wait for some time and there's still no improvement and the ICP is still raised. Then when you repeat the uh, ICP is raised. So ICP, huh? ICP is raised ah. and you're giving the first dose of mandatory, uh, that police dose. And after waiting for some time, if there's no clinical improvement in the patient, then you're still finding that the ICP is raised. So, no, this is in fact the ICP, no? Hmm. That's going to be different uh, algorithm only. So, what happens? There is a there is a clear cut algorithm on refractory ICP. Okay. okay. When the refractory ICP is, you give, you have done everything. You have given Maritol. You have done, uh, you know, whatever, uh, uh, whatever it needs. You you gone through that entire step ladder pattern where you first uh, hyperventilate your patient. You have given Maritol. You have given head eye. All that has been done. There is not improvement. That comes to decompression period. You understand how decompression. So it's, if you were to monitor ICP, the, the threshold that we had in where I worked was if the ICP was more than 20 millimeters of mercury for 15 minutes, for 15 minutes, we used to give Maridol. Okay, that was if the ICP, I used to work in an area where all patients were monitored with cerebral perfusion pressure monitors and ICP monitors. Like it's called Lycox and, uh, and uh, you know, the intraventricular probes. This is what we used to use, okay. So we used to monitor the brain tissue oxygen, we used to monitor the brain tissue vasculature as well as we used to monitor the intracranial pressure. So what we used to, the threshold in that hospital and what is followed worldwide is if the ICP goes more than 20, because there can be some ICP going up and down for some small reasons, for that you don't want to give at all. Okay, some small reasons like the patient has moved in bed or the patient's sedation requirements have slightly increased or they have changed some sedation. So we have done a simple thing like a small suction or a small position change. Patient will position change because the ICP goes up. 22, 23 goes up. The position, even if position changes, even if position changes, the patient's ICP goes up. 22, 23 goes up. But that settles not quickly. So that don't give man at all. But if it goes up and remains 15 minutes at more than 20, that is the threshold of man at all. So when you give that and the ICP comes down, very well and fine. Many times what happens, you give that ICP, nothing happens only after that. As we remain said that, so we call the neurosurgeons. The neurosurgeons will come in because the only thing you can make space is by removing the skull. Yeah, at the end of the day, you're trying to make skull, uh, place, place in the skull. And if once you have, uh, you have found that there is no more effect coming in the skull, huh? no more thing coming in the skull, the only thing left by is remove the uh, skull, cranial vault, cause a decompressive pain. You understand? It's never given a PR, it's never given a, as a regular dose. Is there any other regular dose? Any more questions on Manitol? So, intracellular hemorrhage is one place where it is very, very controversial. This is a very important question that you asked. Very controversial. In fact, traumatic brain injury is, is actually how to put it the other way. Traumatic brain injury is more controversial than ICP because we know a little bit about traumatic brain injury. Now, what happens in traumatic brain injury? I understand this very clearly, okay? In traumatic brain injury, I fall down, okay? I have an injury. My whole brain is edematous. So I put my bolt here, I put my catheter here, I put my bolt here, the ICP will be globally raised. Mm -hmm. Understanding? Mm -hmm. huh? Because when I put my catheter, I put it in one part of the brain, no? Mm -hmm. That part of the brain ICP is raised or not, that we don't know, right? Mm -hmm. So in probability patients, what happens is global ICP. You understand? The whole ICP of the brain is gone, is gone up. That is why you put it anywhere and you have raised ICP. You can monitor. What happens in ICP is something very peculiar. It is only one part of the brain. So you have a large bleed in say a part of the brain with the parietal lobe. Now where to put the ICP bolt? Either directly with the pressure normal right? Either directly with the pressure elevated right? What we know is from traumatic brain literature. About Manitol what we know is from traumatic brain injury literature. It says that if there is global ICP elevation, if there is more than 20 millimeters of mercury for 15 minutes, give Manitol it will come down. This is what we know from traumatic brain injury literature. You understand? We don't know what happens with IC hemorrhage because we don't know whether to monitor also ICP and where to monitor. Whether to monitor far away from the bleed, whether to monitor in the bleed, whether to monitor around the bleed because the ICP will change in that because it's a it's a focal problem. It's not a global problem. So if I monitor the ICP on this side, it will not be reflecting this side. Are you understanding? So we don't know even whether we should monitor the ICP. So if we don't know whether we should monitor the ICP also, we do not know how to treat that. So what, so what they have taken an expert consensus is, if there is hemorrhage, if there is hemorrhage, IC hemorrhage, you give Panadol. Okay, you give Panadol, can be given. I said, okay, but nobody said when, why, how. 
So if it is raised uh, ICP, which we consider clinically, that's why we need these new devices called as pupillometry and all these things. You got the point? Huh? If you have pupillometry, uh, if you have brain tissue oxygen saturation, you may still want to give Manitol. But now if you understand Manitol, it cannot work so easily. You know? it is, it's not so easy to work with Manitol. Okay, so in an IC hemorrhage, you may be justified because you're saying that this is probably related to raised ICP, maybe. So I'm going to give the manitol. But I don't know. The answer is I don't know whether we should give it or not. But in the brain uh, ICH hemorrhage guidelines, they say give manitol or IC hemorrhage with raised ICP. That is what they mention. You understand? They, they mention that. So they, they say you give manitol for those cases. So I, I don't know what the answer is. Answer is what will I do? I will probably give it and take care of the side effects. So I'll see that there is no sodium issue, there is no clear kidney issue, there is no abnormalities. You got the point? Huh? Because I don't know how, how it works. Because that patient, Dipali, who had ICP and mm -hmm. came first, so that patient was given a manitol uh, on a daily basis for 3 to 4. Because it's ICP hemorrhage, no? I don't know what to do. Yes. The only thing was, that's why I was saying, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. वो पेशेंट को ऐसे सुबह करो एड्रेस शाम को करो मैं को आई डोंट वांट इट इन टू प्रॉब्लम्स टू अगर इसे इफ इट हैड गोन टू 155 160 देन द हॉस्पिटल आईडी बी मच मोर हायर यू अंडरस्टैंड सो आई डोंट वांट इट टू गो लाइक दैट सो इफ इट्स एज लॉन्ग एज इट्स नियर टू 140 155 एंड कंफर्टेबल बट इफ इट वाज मोर देन दैट आई एम नॉट कंफर्टेबल नो टू गिव मैन इट ऑल ये इशू ये है दैट्स व्हाई इट वाज ऑन यू अंडरस्टैंड सो दैट्स व्हाई इन ऑफ लेबल इंडिकेशन द इंडिकेशन इज व्हाट इफ देयर इज रेज आईसीपी That is the indication. In the cases of raised ICP with cerebral edema, they have two indications that are licensed: raised ICP, cerebral edema. Now, IC hemorrhage has got cerebral edema. Mm -hmm. Huh? Raised ICP is in the purview of providing treatment. So, so that dosing will be the same as the dosing given to you. I think so because otherwise it won't work. Also, that is the dose. So the, that's why there is a range in the dose. That's why it's not a single dose. The dose is 0.5 gram per kilogram to 2 gram per kilogram. Mm -hmm. That's why there is a range also. I think. Because 0.5 grams to 2 grams. So when you say 0.5 grams in a 50 kilo dose, it is 20 grams, 100 ml. You understand? That's why that range is there. Otherwise, why would there be a range otherwise? Clear? Any more queries on manitol? Manitol or hypertonic saline?